Hi everyone, welcome back to Storytime. Uh, glad you could join me this afternoon. Uh, we are going to continue with a chapter from Friska, my friend. And of course we're going to have one of our devotions from the Indescribable book. So, hope you've had a lovely day, a couple of days since I last saw you. Um, we are on chapter four and we got to the point where Colin has found out that uh, Charlie the old man actually got taken ill when he went to visit his sister so the dog has now come to live with Colin found the mum, found the dog sleeping in Colin's bed and uh, Colin's been really excited because he was, he had uh, the sermon on Sunday in church was about him by Simon the uh, vicar. Well, shall we find out what happens next? Okay, so chapter four. So, old Charlie never came back. He was to live in a home near to his sister. So Friska stayed at the farm. Colin could hardly remember the time when Friska hadn't been there. She waited for him at the bottom of the stairs in the morning. She saw him off to school. She scampered down the lane to meet him on his return. She was a beautiful, glossy, bright-eyed dog now, and she was so well-behaved that no one at the farm was sorry that they had taken her in. The summer holidays came. Colin helped his dad and wandered over the countryside with Will and Frisker. At the beginning of August, the boys went to camp. Joy promised to look after Frisker. It was a great week. But when the last day came, Colin could hardly wait to get back to his dog. He was nearly knocked over by her welcome. September arrived and it was time to go back to school. The leaves were beginning to turn yellow and the hills were hidden by mists in the morning. The plums and apples were ripening in the orchard. One Saturday afternoon, Joy and Colin decided to go and look for blackberries. You go down towards the hop yard, they'll be best, said Mum. Blackberries ripen quicker down in the valley. The children ran down the rutted track that led to the distant hop field on the further side to the farm. To the left lay the orchard, but on the right the woods came down the track. Here the hedges were heavy with blackberries. Joy and Colin picked the juicy berries. Frisker ran into the woods to hunt for rabbits. Suddenly, they heard a furious barking. Colin, spilling half his berries, dashed in among the trees. He saw Frisker standing in front of a huge Alsatian dog. It, is on a, it was on a lead and was growling deep in its throat. Colin grabbed Frisker's collar. The big Alsatian was being firmly held by two boys a little older than himself. They wore scruffy clothes and no one and one carried a sack over his back. Neither they nor the dog looked very friendly. Colin felt a bit scared. He made for the edge of the wood, dragging Frisker behind him. She was still barking. Joy had climbed the bank to see what was going on. She wasn't afraid of the boys with the big dog. She smiled. Hi, she said. All right, said the eldest of the boys. The big dog stopped growling. Frisker stopped barking and Colin stopped feeling afraid. Then Joy asked them what they'd got in their sack. Want to see him? said the older boy. He opened the sack and pulled out a pink-eyed, yellow-toothed ferret. It had dirty white fur. He pushed it towards Joy. Let me introduce you to rats, he said. Joy said, you've been rabbiting, haven't you? How many did you catch? None. Swagger, he is not much good at rabbiting. The older boy looked at his dog. He's too big. That's a nice looking little dog you've got there, said the younger boy, pointing at Triska. Want to sell it? 
No way, said Colin quickly. It was such a terrible idea that he's put his arms around Friska and held her tight. The younger boy said no more. He just glared, his dark curls half over his eyes. Where do you live then? The older boy asked Joy. Up at the farm on the hill. Where do you live? In a better house than yours. Want to see you? Yes, OK, said Joy. How far is it? Joy and Colin looked at each other. Colin didn't really want to go, but he could see Joy did. He couldn't let her go alone, so he gave a little nod. Come on then, said the older boy. They went down the track until they came to the main road. A van was parked in the lay-by hitched to a trailer, a long white caravan with scarlet curtains. A group of people sat round outside talking and laughing. The children stopped a little way off. There, said the older boy proudly. Good, isn't it? These are my people, he nodded towards his friends. His people live in another trailer. It'll be along soon. It's great, said Joy. I wish I lived in a house like that. Where are you going? Dunno. On to the hop somewhere. Might be anywhere, said the older boy. Want to see inside? Not now. We must go back, said Joy. OK, said the older boy. Cheers, then. He smiled in a friendly way, but the younger boy still said nothing. He just stared, and his bright eyes were fixed on Friska. Joy and Colin hurried up the track, talking about the caravan. They thought it must be wonderful to live in a trailer, always moving on. That kind of life made the farm seem quite boring. It was dusk, and rabbits were coming out in the twilight. Friska kept rushing into the woods, and the children did not wait for her. She often chased rabbits, and she knew her way home. They arrived back happy and hungry. Mum was cooking tea. There was a lovely smell in the kitchen. Joy and Colin sat down with glasses of orange juice. They told Mum all about their adventure and how they wished they lived in a caravan. Mum laughed and said she was happy on the farm. Where's Friska? said Colin suddenly. I wonder if she's caught a rabbit for a change. She hardly ever does. She makes too much noise. Let her be, said Mum. A dog wants to have a bit of fun on its own. She'll come in her own time. Colin went to the door and stood looking out at the darkening hills. A new moon hung behind the woods and an owl hooted. He felt a bit jealous thinking about Friska having fun on her own without him. He whistled. There was no answer. The owl hooted again. Colin stepped out into the yard and looked around. Friska must be having a very exciting time to stay out so long. He walked a little, while, a little way to where the woods came down to the edge of the track. Friska, he called. Good dog, come home now, good dog. But there was no Friska. The leaves rustled and some little animals ran about in a ditch. Just the ordinary night sounds. No happy barking or scampering paws. Colin suddenly felt very scared. He rushed back to the house. He was glad to find his father in the kitchen. Dad, Mum, Joy, he shouted. Friska's not there. She never goes far. She always comes when I call. She's gone. Let's all call, said Joy. And they all ran outside. Up and down the track they went, calling and calling. They went all the way back to the place where they had picked blackberries. Then they came all the way back home, still calling. But it was no good. Friska had completely disappeared. We'll have to go home now, Colin, said Dad sadly. May it be someone's stolen her. We may have to ring the police. They went back into the kitchen and Dad put his arm round Colin's shoulders. Colin began to cry. We'll find her, son, he said. Maybe she'll come home in the night. We'll hear if she scratches. Joy looked up suddenly. Cal, she said, do you think that boy could have taken her? The younger one. He wanted to buy her and he kept looking at her. Colin gave a big sniff. <laughs> but she was with us until we were nearly home, he said. I saw her chase a rabbit into the woods just below the crab apple tree. The boy could have followed us, said Joy. It was getting dark and we were hurrying. We didn't look around. 
Colin got quite excited. Then the police could find him, he said. We know what the caravan looks like, white with red curtains. Joy shook her head. That one belonged to the older boy's family, she said. The other one was waiting for the trailer to arrive. We didn't see it. But we'd know Frisker anywhere. It ought to be easy. We'll get the f police first thing in tomorrow morning, said Dad. Colin drank a cup of tea and went up to bed very quietly. His mother looked in later and thought he was asleep. His father only discovered their mistake next morning. He came downstairs yawning and found Colin asleep in his sleeping bag, right by the door. So let's read one of our indescribable devotions. And this one is called The Story of the Stars. The heavens tell the glory of God, and the skies announce what his hands have made. Day after day they tell the story, night after night they tell it again. And that's from Psalm 19 verses 1 to 2. Did you ever go to story time at the library, or listen as your parents or grandparents told you a story? There's something about listening to a story that is just, well magical. Perhaps it's because you can close your eyes, lie back and let your imagination soar. Did you know that God tells stories too? He tells the very best ones and he uses the stars to do it. And the story those stars tell isn't just a sweet soft tale about the, how they twinkle and shine. No, their story is one of majesty and might and power. It's the story of a God who created everything you can see and everything you cannot see. Their story is shouted, blasted across the universe, through the sky and down to you. They don't use words to tell their story, they use their presence. For nothing so perfect, so majestic, could have just happened by accident. They had to have a grand creator, God. God makes the stars. He is awesome. He's incredible. He is indescribable. And this God who made the stars also made you. God wants to fill your life with his story. Just look up, the st look up the stars and start to listen. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Genesis 1 verse 1. Like the stars, you are part of his story. And you were made to tell everyone how amazing the Creator is. Lord, just thinking that the one who created the stars wants to make me part of his story is amazing. Thank you. Open my ears to hear the story your creation tells and then help me tell it too. Be amazed. Stars don't really twinkle at all. It looks as if they do because our atmosphere causes the starlight to bend slightly as it makes its way to Earth. Our atmosphere is made up of gas-filled air that is always moving. Think of it like the wind. The light moves through the atmosphere as the atmosphere moves too. That's what makes stars seem to twinkle. So next time you look up at the scar stars, maybe tonight, have a look. Can you see any stars tonight? I think they're not really twinkling, but it's just the way that the light bends slightly as it comes to Earth. 
but God made the stars. He's incredible, he's indescribable, and this God who made the stars also made you. That is amazing. Now, I look forward to you joining me next time. I'm quite intrigued. I want to know what's happened to Friska. So join me next time where we'll read another chapter and we'll find out where exactly Friska is. Is she just lost? Has she been stolen? Oh my goodness. We'll have to wait and see. But before then, let's just finish with a prayer. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for this time together. Thank you that we can read these stories and read these facts about the stars, how amazing that uh, the stars are in the sky. And help us as we see the scars, uh, stars, help us to look at them with fresh eyes, realising how amazing you are that you spoke and the stars came into being. And Father, you are the God who created the stars and you are the same God who created us. Thank you that you want us to be part of your story. Amen. So join me next time for some more stories. And until there, then have a lovely few days and I shall see you very soon. Bye everyone.